and welcome to the Business Standard Morning Show. I'm Kanishka Gupta. Let's have a look at the stories for the day. High attrition rates and fear of recession in key western markets kept India's IT sector on its toes last year. While attrition has come down, experts suggest that a recession is imminent. Against this backdrop, what do the recent results of IT majors and their guidance say about the future of the sector? Baswar Kumar brings you the answer. Beating street estimates on both revenue and net profit, IT giant Infosys has posted strong numbers for the third quarter of FY23. India's second largest information technology company also raised its revenue guidance for FY23 because of a strong deal pipeline, despite the uncertain global macroeconomic environment. Infosys said that it expected revenue growth in the range of 16 to 16.5% in the current financial year, against the earlier projection of 15 to 16%. However, Infosys Chief Executive Officer and Managing Director Salil Parekh said that delays in decision-making and uncertainties were impacting sectors like investment banking, telecom and retail. A senior analyst also said that the uncertain global macro environment would reflect in earnings volatility in FY24 for Infosys, adding that the firm's long-term growth outlook was still intact. Tata Consultancy Services too beat revenue expectations in the third quarter but missed the mark on profit estimates and the management issued a positive demand commentary. Analysts said that a quarterly decline of over 2,200 employees in the total headcount and an almost 4% shrinkage in deal bookings were indicators that pointed towards a slowdown. According to Jeffries, along with the falling employee headcount, TCS's book-to-bill ratio, which was at its lowest in three years, pointed to a sharp growth moderation in FY24. The book-to-bill ratio is the ratio of the orders received to units shipped and billed for a given period. For its part, while Motilal Oswal said that reduced demand visibility remained a key risk for FY24 growth, TCS was well positioned to withstand the weakening macro environment given its order book and exposure to long-duration orders. The consolidated net profit and consolidated revenue numbers of HCL Technologies 2 came out better than estimates. However, analysts said that the management's narrowed revenue and margin guidance for FY23 indicated softness in the fourth quarter of the current financial year on the back of seasonal weakness and a drop in the products and platforms business. According to Jeffries, HCL Tech's higher exposure to the products and the engineering, research and development businesses could drag revenues in a recessionary environment. According to Nirmal Bang, a few soft quarters were likely in the foreseeable future. Analysts also foresee significant margin pressures. However, according to Motilal Oswal, given HCL Tech's infrastructure management services and digital space capabilities, strategic partnerships and investments in cloud, the firm was likely to emerge stronger on the back of a healthy demand environment. At Infosys, the net profit for Q3 came in at 6,586 crore rupees, up 13.4% year-on-year and 9.4% sequentially. Its revenue grew 20.2% year-on-year to 38,318 crore rupees. It was up 4.9% sequentially. Meanwhile, Tata Consultancy Services reported a 19% year-on-year revenue growth to 58,229 crore rupees. Net profit rose 11% year-on-year to 10,800 and 46 crore rupees. For its part, HCL Tech reported a 20% rise in its consolidated net profit for Q3 FY23 at 4,096 crore rupees against 3,442 crore rupees a year ago. Its consolidated revenue from operations increased 19.61% to 26,700 crore rupees against 22,321 crore rupees a year ago. 
Wipro reported a 2.82% growth in consolidated net profit for the third quarter of FY23 at 3053 crore rupees against 2969 crore rupees recorded a year ago. The consolidated revenue from operations was up 14.35% at 23229 crore rupees against 20314 crore rupees in the corresponding quarter last year. Overall, analysts have cautioned that the stagflationary environment in the West could affect tech spending in FY24. Against this backdrop, what do the latest IT results and guidance have to say about the sector's future? Anand Insight uh, believes that the Indian IT services uh, sector has seen a bit of a slowdown. Uh, this year, we expect the industry to grow. FY24, we expect the industry to grow between 10 to 12 percent. A large part of the growth will be driven by uh, tier 2, tier 3 players who will continue to grow slightly faster than uh, their tier 1 players between 12 to 15 percent. Uh, FY24, we believe, we believe, is going to be a year of consolidation and uh, cost cuts and largely uh, a margin improvement focused year. I think FY24, you could see easily a, a 0 0.4 uh, to a close to a percentage improvement for margins for some of the players which are doing very uh, efficiently on the talent supply chain front. Uh, so you could see your overall wage bills getting normalized, your retention budgets, your attrition budgets getting uh, cut down drastically compared to FI 22 and 23. Growth path of IT companies will continue and uh, the environment uh, uh, may become slightly more difficult going further because of the competition and the changing buying behavior, which we see. And I am not much worried uh, from a recession perspective because we are not hearing from either the clients or the providers that they are seeing this as a big threat. But um, uh, IT companies, Indian IT companies need to be, uh, you know, continue with its innovation and uh, with its shift towards more digital, that is going to be the key because some of them are having, you know, huge legacy workload, which may become a kind of a challenge for them. Infosys managed to bring attrition down to 24% in Q3 compared to 27% in the preceding quarter. In Q3, the attrition rate of TCS was lower than that of Infosys. The Tata Group firm brought down its attrition rate marginally from 21.5% in Q2 FY23 to 21.3% in the latest quarter. However, hiring dropped at TCS. The employee addition number for Infosys was also soft at about 1600 for the quarter. For Q3 FY23, HCL Tech's attrition stood at 21.7%, lower than the 23.8% September quarter reading. And HCL Tech added almost 6,000 freshers during the latest quarter. So, going ahead, which direction will IT attrition and hiring move in? Overall, uh, this year, FI24 coming year is going to be largely focused on internal fulfillment, uh, utilization of bench, and a lot of freshers that were hired uh, that are going to be hired in Q4, uh, utilization of all of those uh, internal resources and reskilling, upskilling. Uh, so, overall, gross hiring, FI22, we saw. Uh, the highest gross hiring of about 1.5 million professionals in the entire sector. FI23, we are seeing the dip uh, by end of this quarter. You will see the overall gross hiring number touch about 1.2 million professionals. And FI24 with attrition tapering down uh, and uh, with overall net, net new addition also slowing down uh, uh, as usual because of the large, uh, I mean, because of the slowdown in the business, we believe that FI24 gross hiring would touch about 1 million professionals. Overall, while a likely moderation in attrition will benefit the IT sector, much of its fate could still depend on how severe the projected recession in its major American and European markets will be. Automobile companies, meanwhile, don't see the looming global recession as a threat to their growth. They have lined up a host of new launches, and most of them are at display at the ongoing Auto Expo in Greater Noida. So, what makes the 16th Auto Expo different? Debarga Sanyal tells us what this year's Auto Expo is all about.
Auto Expo 2023 is all about the green push. From electric vehicles to this lavish green lounge that you see behind me. And if you look carefully, you might actually be able to see a virtual reality world. 2022 was a massive year for India's auto exports and auto production. And now the Indian as well as foreign auto companies do not want to slow down. But the message is clear. Make more cars, make swanky cars, but make sure that they are driving us into a greener, cleaner, safer future. The country's largest car maker, Maruti Suzuki, is finally warming up to the SUVs. Its CEO, Hishashi Takeuchi, acknowledged last week that the company underestimated the speed of the SUV segment's growth. It showcased three new SUV models at the Expo. The first is an EV. The first step was taken by Maruti's SUV electric concept, the EVX. It is supposed to hit the market by 2025. The EVX is a mid-sized electric SUV concept which will be packed with a 60 kilowatt hour battery. Its claimed driving range is up to 550 km on a single full charge. This Grand Vitara sized electric SUV sports robust and futuristic styling elements and is based on a completely new platform for electric vehicles, which will be used for future Maruti EVs. But it will be a while before EVX hits the Indian roads. It is expected to be launched in January 2025. This Maruti SUV is attracting a lot of curiosity at the expo. People are just thronging the stall where five-door Jimny is being showcased. While globally, Jimny had three doors, the Indian version will have five. This off-roader's starting range is 10 lakh rupees and it will go on sale from March this year, giving competition to Thar and other lookalikes. And last but not least is the all-new Frunks YTB crossover. The Baleno-based SUV is expected to be launched in April. Frunks's ex-showroom price is likely to start from 7 lakh rupees. So, with these new launches, Maruti Suzuki is aiming for the number one spot in the SUV segment by 2023-2024. We also have Hyundai's much-awaited, much-anticipated all-electric SUV Ionic 5, which has a range of 631 km on full charge. The Ionic 5 is powered by a 72.6 kilowatt-hour battery pack, producing 217 horsepower and a peak torque of 350 Nm. The Ionic 5 can be charged from 10% to 80% in just 18 minutes. The car sports a clean straight-lined look, sleek minimalist interiors and a thin 12.3-inch touchscreen unit as well as a Bose 8-speaker surround sound system. Its starting range is from 44 lakhs. Tata, which leads the passenger EV sector with more than 80% market share, unveiled 12 vehicles including Sierra, Harrier and Avenia in the EV segment. The concept curve in the ICE segment and Altros and Punch in the CNG segment. The curve concept will be first built as an EV before the ICE variant hits the market. The Avenia EV concept has been scheduled to enter production in 2025, the same year that Tata Sierra EV concept, which sees the return of the Sierra moniker after two decades, is marked to land on the Indian roads. Unlike the older Sierra, the one showcased at the Expo has a five-door SUV setup. It has a much more upright bonnet, there is a new blocked-off grille, a chunky bumper and a very sleek minimalist interior. This swanky blue beast with futuristic headlights and clean-cut lines is Kia's EV9 concept. Car makers like BYD, MG and Lexus have also unveiled their EV concepts or EV facelifts. While big names like Tata, Maruti and Hyundai made aggressive forays into the EV segment, major pure EV manufacturers were conspicuous 
by their absence. Even other major names like Honda, Mahindra, Volkswagen also did not show up on the roll call. Here's Faisal Khan of Motor Beam to tell us why. So I think the reason most big brands are not attending the Auto Expo this year is because uh, of the ROI factor. Firstly, it's a very expensive show. I think it's the second most expensive after the Chinese Motor Show, the Shanghai Motor Show. And then they are not able to get a good ROI bang for their buck because there are a lot of participants, like smaller participants having a smaller show area. So I think in the content and the information uh, doesn't last that long. The hype does not last that long because one press conference is over, someone does one better and then it just gets lost in all this. The absence of big names was also felt in the EV two-wheeler segment. Ola Electric, Okinawa Scooters, Hero Electric and Aether Energy are not charged enough to sign up, alluding to the high cost of participation, slacking media focus and low customer interest in the electric two-wheeler category. Despite the absence of big names, the options for bike lovers weren't limited. One of India's fastest and most expensive e-bikes, Ultra Violet's F77, was on display and available for booking. As was Ligger Mobility's auto-balancing scooter. Several B2B startups were also showcasing their e-rickshaws and delivery bikes. But will building EVs be enough? What are the major challenges in building a comprehensive electric ecosystem. One of these challenges will be setting up an extensive network of charging stations. Auto manufacturers are aware of this and companies like MG, Maruti and Tata are already investing in it. What else is going on in this direction? Rajiv Chaba, President and Managing Director of MG Motors India tells us. When we launched, we tied up with charger companies, charging infrastructure companies like BBCL, Tata Power, uh, Geo BP to set up the chargers. We also started and promoted uh, some startup companies on the charge, on the last mile connectivity or for the charger. Uh, and also we have uh, tied up with few companies for end of life cycle for the battery. Uh, we are also joining hand uh, to, to, to set up the chargers on the highways. Uh, uh, on our own way, we are uh, we have put uh, the chargers uh, at dealer locations and some residential locations and we want to take it up to around 1000 charging installations in the next uh, one and a half years or so. Returning after a hiatus of three years, the Auto Expo is all about the EV push this year. However, there's much more on the offer. Augmented reality setups, launches in metaverse, drone photography and much more. Despite the absence of several big brands, especially in the two-wheelers, there's still much more on offer to capture the imagination of the visitors. There's much more to the Indian rupee than what meets the eye. The domestic currency surprised everyone by starting 2023 on an optimistic note after depreciating over 10% against the US dollar last year. Our next report takes a deep dive into what lies ahead for it in the near term. The Indian rupee depreciated over 10% last year against the dollar, clocking its poorest performance since 2013. It was the worst drubbing among Asian currencies as the US Federal Reserve's aggressive monetary policy propelled the greenback. However, since the start of 2023, the Indian rupee has appreciated by around 2%. From the record low level of 83.27 hit in December 2022, the currency has recovered 2.32%. On Friday, it closed at 81.34 versus the US dollar. Analysts primarily attribute the recent gains to decline in the dollar index. Pritam Patnayak of Axis Securities says that hopes of a rate cut were pressuring the dollar index. The reason for the rally in the rupee has been the very reason why we saw it depreciating when the dollar index was increasing. 
It's the dollar index which has shaved off some of its gain and as we speak today trades at around 102.7 levels. Uh, this is primarily because of the fact that the entire markets are factoring that the U US Fed is going to reduce the rate of hikes uh, going forward and there's 75% probability of a 25 basis point hike in the next Fed meet. Additionally, they are also pricing in a fact that come uh, the end of this uh, year, calendar year, we could see not only the rate hikes stopping altogether, but also some rate cuts. And that has kind of pushed, put pressure on the dollar index and that has benefited the Indian rupee. On the domestic front, FI outflow continues. Um, the economy still, you know, needs some breather time. And I don't see RBI coming in and cutting rates anytime soon. And if that happens, it's going to be counterproductive for the rupee. So in the short term, my view is that 8150 is a great level to go along for dollar. And we could see a rupee depreciating from this point. Technically, the Indian rupee has been consolidating in a broad range of 80.5 to 83.2 for the last four months. The monthly chart indicates that rupee can test 79.8 in the short to medium term. According to the weekly chart, the pivot point for rupee is at 81.67. A sustained trade below the same could see the Indian currency strengthen versus the dollar to 79.80 odd level. On the other hand, in case rupee trades consistently above 81.67 level, it can depreciate it to 83 mark versus the US dollar. Further, the monthly options data for the USD INR contract expiring on 27 January suggests a likely trading range of 81 to 83.50. The monthly options data shows that the highest open interest for USD INR contracts is seen at 83.5 call. This is followed by 83 and 82 strike price. Therefore, the rupee may face likely resistance around 82.55 to 82.7. Among puts, the highest open interest is visible at 82 put. This indicates the possibility of a pullback above 82 level in the near term. However, on the downside, the USD INR January contract may find considerable support around 80.5 and 80.8. .8. Meanwhile, on the bourses, rupee-linked sectors mostly outperformed the benchmark indices last week. The BSE Metal Index soared nearly 4% while the BSE IT Index vaulted 3%. The healthcare index closed with a modest gain of 0.2% last week. By comparison, the SNP BSC Sensex ended with a gain of 0.6% and the Nifty 50 added 0.5% during the period. In the broader markets, the BSC mid cap was up 0.01%, while the small cap index was up 0.2%. This week, apart from the rupee movement, FII flows, global queues, and Q3 earnings will be in focus. Indusin Bank, Asian Paints, Hindustan Unilever, HDFC Life, GSW Steel, ICICI Bank, SBI Life, Ultratech Cement, and Yes Bank are some of the prominent Nifty 50 companies scheduled to announce results this week. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated the world's longest river cruise, MV Ganga Vilas, last week. It will be one big leap in the country's luxury tourism. The cruise will start the journey from Varanasi and voyage through Ganga Brahmaputra rivers to reach its final destination in Dibrugarh in Assam. We tell more about it in our next segment. Ever dreamt of cruising over the majestic Ganges, just like Cleopatra did? On the Nile. A luxury voyage on the new Ganga Vilas can be a comparable experience. Starting a new chapter in India's luxury heritage tourism, MV Ganga Vilas is now on its maiden 51 day voyage with 32 tourists from Switzerland. Operated by Antara Cruises, it is an inland water cruise vessel that will meander through 27 river systems of four Indian states and parts of Bangladesh. It was virtually flagged off by PM Narendra Modi last week from Varanasi and will stop at 50 tourist spots touching several cities of historical importance along the Ganga Brahmaputra bank before reaching Dibrugarh in Assam via Bangladesh. The 3,200-kilometer-long 51-day voyage can be divided into three parts. The first part of the route starts from Varanasi and ends in Kolkata. 
Sarnath, Bodh Gaya and Nalanda are the three major places of interest along the way. In the next phase, the cruise will navigate through the world's largest delta, the Sundarbans. On entering Bangladesh, the cruise will travel 1,100 kilometers through the Indo-Bangla Protocol route. Traversing through Meghna, Padma and Jamuna rivers in Bangladesh, it will make 17 stopovers, including Dhaka. On its final phase, the world's longest river cruise will enter Assam through the Brahmaputra River. It will traverse through the east of Assam from Dubri to Dibrugarh in the west. Mayong, a village known for magic and witchcraft, Kaziranga National Park and the biggest river island in the world, Majuli, are the major attractions before the journey concludes. Aganga Vilas is a 62-meter-long three-deck cruise. The draft of the cruise is 1.4 meters. Ganga Vilas has the capacity to carry 80 passengers in its 18 suites. Built at an estimated cost of 68 crore rupees, the cruise has on board gymnasium, restaurant, sun deck, lounge, spa, and library. For a single passenger, a 52 day journey in Ganga Vilas costs 12.6 lakh rupees. Alternatively, passengers can avail a halfway trip either from Varanasi to Kolkata or Kolkata to Dibrugarh. The Ganga Vilas will be making six voyages in a year and the tickets can be purchased from the operator's website. According to Raj Singh, CEO of Antara Luxury Cruises, tickets for the next two years have already been booked. However, the option of reservation against cancellation will be available. As a landmark development in inland waterways development and tourism in India, the Ganga Vilas is expected to attract both domestic and international tourists on its luxury experiential voyages. Trusted Bank, SBI, the banker to every Indian. The cruise also has a sewage treatment plant to ensure that sewage doesn't flow into the river. It also has a filtration plant which will filter Ganga water for bathing. That's all for today. For more news, views and analysis, please log on to business-standard.com. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.